Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It's great to have all of you here as we continue our Advent preparations of preparing our hearts and our homes, especially our hearts. As these first couple of weeks in Advent, we take time to ponder and think about our own lives um, and how our lives look and why Jesus came was because of our sinful lives. It's our sins that put him on the cross. And so we take these first couple of Sundays and we anticipate and we think about the sins in our lives and the things that are wrong and where we can improve. As we'll hear John um, tell us today, things he expects of us as Christians um, as we wait for Jesus to come again, how our lives should be looking. A couple of brief announcements for you. Again, we do communion this morning. We're going up to the rail. We've switched to that. So um, east side, we'll go this way. And they know to go first and go up here. And probably it'll be one table, it looks like, with the numbers. And we just fill up the whole table with the east side. And then we'll switch to the west side. And I think it's one full table up here, too, with the numbers today. So communion today that way. Um, if you're going to help with the uh, drive through live nativity, if you've signed up, and if you haven't signed up and you're going to come help, you need to stop by my office and you need to get this piece of paper. It's a yellow piece of paper. It'll go in on your dash if you're going to come and help volunteer and be a part of this. It helps the people directing traffic to get you in. All help people, volunteers helping, will enter on Groves Ave, which is the street that's just directly... Um, in front of the armory. You'll go in and you'll turn right and park in the south parking lot of the armory, all the volunteers there. And if you have this, then people directing traffic there will know to send you there instead of trying to tell you to turn around and go up to, um, what's the other one up there, Bluff, where the drive through light nativity people will go through. They'll enter up on Bluff Ave. So if you're going to help with that, it'd be good if you signed up as well. <clears throat> but please also pick up one of these from me today um, to help with that. Um, again, that's um, next Saturday from 10 to 6, the drive through if you want to just come through and see the nativity. Um, it's a little longer this year, the time frame, to help because we had so many people and went so long last year, um, which we're hoping will happen again this year as well. So please pick this yellow paper up from me. It'd be best if you got online and signed up. The address is on that sheet. I think it's still in your bulletin for the live nativity half sheet. Um, and the address for the sign up genius is there for that as well. So with that, we follow our order of service for this, the second Sunday in Advent. We begin with our opening hymn. Let the earth now praise the Lord.
We stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We gather around God's word and sacrament as the people of God filled with a hope given in baptism. As we wait for the fullness of Christ's coming, we are called to repentance. Therefore, we confess our sins to our Heavenly Father, God of all hope, we acknowledge to you that we are sinners and confess our sins, known and unknown. We know that nothing remains hidden from you, and to you all our faults and failures are revealed. Free us from the slavery and sin of sin. Release us from our hopelessness. Fill us with your spirit that we may do your, which is pleasing in your sight for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God and for the sake of the suffering and death of his son Jesus on the cross, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. We praise you, O God, for this circle of light that numbers the days of preparation for Christ coming again. As we light the second candle on this wreath, fill us with the hope that comes from you, that we may be lights shining in the darkness of our world. Give us the light of your grace, that we may, by the power of your Holy Spirit, prepare our hearts to welcome him with hope. We ask this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts and fill us with hope, Lord God that we may prepare the way for your only Son. By the promise of his coming, empower us to serve you with pure hearts and a renewed spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, whom with you and the Holy Spirit, we worship and praise one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading for this, the second Sunday in Advent, comes from Malachi chapter 3. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, and like the fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, and they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for your judgment, I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falselessly, against those who oppress the hired worker and his wages, and widows and the fatherless, against those who thrust aside the sojourner, and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. From the days of your fathers you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson comes from Philippians chapter 1. <clears throat> Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my, joy with, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about all, you all because I hold you in my heart. 
for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus, and it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand and speak our Alleluia in verse together. <clears throat> Alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord, according to St. Luke, the third chapter. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, and Herod, being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Ituria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall become straight, and the rough places shall become level ways, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. He said, therefore, to the crowds that came out to be baptized him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then shall we do? And he answered them, Whoever has two tunics is to share with him who has none, and whoever has food is to do likewise. Tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than you are authorized to do. Soldiers also asked, his, asked him, And we, what shall we do? And he said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusations, and be content with your wages. As the people were in expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Christ, John answered them all, saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, who had been reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all, that he locked up John in prison. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we join in singing on Jordan's Bank, The Baptist Cry. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> our text for our message this morning comes from our gospel reading from Luke that was read a few moments ago from the lectern. Dear friends, surely the Advent season is a stark reminder that we in the church, we march to a different beat and a different drum than what the world does. While the world is out there making merry with all sorts of Christmas celebration things going on already, we in the church, we listen to rather sober preaching today from a very eccentric wilderness preacher. While the world starts its celebration of Christmases, it seems like it's starting earlier and earlier every year. Store shelves, they start to fill up with Christmas items. Even before Halloween is over with, uh, they start switching everything over. Hallmark, it begins to cycle through all of its library of all of the great Christmas movies beginning in November. And we in the church, we wait and we wait. While the world is joining and singing it's the most wonderful time of the year, then the church is pondering her sins and talking of God's pardon and how this is the time to prepare our hearts for Christ to come and to enter there. As we think about this, and we think about and we know that important things, and they require lots of planning and preparation. And it doesn't matter what we're talking about in the secular world, birthdays, graduations, weddings, right? And so it was for the coming of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the promised Messiah, the Savior of the world. Lots of plans and preparation. That was the most significant and important event ever to take place. Time is actually marked by this event. There is B.C., right, before Christ, and then A.D., Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. You might imagine then that this 
This event, it required a lot of planning and preparation. And that's where John the Baptist comes into the whole story. John was the last and the greatest of the Old Testament prophets. You see, he's the hinge between the Old Testament and the New Testament. John's message, it wasn't exactly politically correct at the time, and it wasn't even very tactful, if you will. He said, therefore, to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Not always so tactful John wasn't. But John was a man sent by God. And in fact, a messenger sent by the very one whose way John was to prepare and make ready for. He was, came to him by the very Son of God himself. And we heard through the prophet Malachi, send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. The Lord said that through the prophet Malachi way back. The angel Gabriel announced John's purpose to his father, Zechariah. John was to make ready the way for the Lord and make the people prepared for the Lord to come. The angel said, he told him, John will turn them to the Lord, turn their hearts. He will turn them from their disobedience. John's preparation, it would happen by means of repentance. The word of the Lord came to John. And that's exactly what he received, and that's exactly what he went out and he proclaimed. Not surprisingly, it had to do with baptism. After all, he's called John the Baptizer, right? Baptism with repentance and the forgiveness of sins. The text tells us John went about the region around the Jordan proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And Luke further tells us then, John fulfilled what another prophet, Isaiah, foretold in his message. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Advent is our time of waiting. Waiting to prepare for that yearly celebration of Christ's birth and first coming. And that's going to happen in just a, th a few short weeks, about three weeks. And during this season, we still listen to John and his message. His preaching, it's still very important for us today. We're still called to repent. His preparation, then, is just as necessary for us today. We still, each and every one of us, need forgiveness. His exhortation is still essential for us today. We must also bear fruit in keeping with repentance. For John prepared the people then, and he actually prepares us now today. Not simply by calling us to repent as a right attitude, but to a true repentance that also implies response. True faith then calls us to do good works without calling upon us to trust in those good works. Therefore, just as a true and living faith bears fruit, remember, <clears throat> as we learn in James, faith Without works, James tells us, is dead. This faith is a part of true repentance, and this faith must also bear fruit in keeping then with repentance. Good works will always follow then justifying faith in people and are surely found with it. And if it's true in a living faith, you see, faith is never ever alone by itself, but always has love and hope connected to it. It all goes together. Faith and works they happen together. You can't have one without the other. But if you think that you can't produce such good fruits then, and that your works are of little significance, consider how John responds to the question, what then shall we do? And he's asked that several times in our text. He answers, if you have more than what you need, share it with those around you who don't have. And if you're a tax collector, he says, be honest. Don't ex take more money from the people. If you're a soldier, don't use your position for power and extortion either. And for us today, where to start? Well, consider your various callings that you live in. Are you a citizen or a public servant? Are you a husband, a wife, a parent, a child? If you are in any of those, do your duty with love. Paul, tell others about the good news then. Tell them about Jesus Christ. And in faith, do what God commands you, and then these are good works. 
They go hand in hand with faith. And when you fail to do good works, it's pretty simple. Repent. And when you fail, for you are a human and you're going to fail, you're going to do all those bad things. Go back and repent. You're going to do the bad you don't want to do, as Paul tells us, because we're still sinful human beings. Repent. Be forgiven then. Return daily to your baptism in which you were first washed clean and given forgiveness and you received the Holy Spirit. Return daily to your baptism where the Lord began a good work in you and he will bring it to completion in his day. Return to the Lord in, <clears throat> in, condition, in contrition and in repentance, looking to the Son, hearing his word of forgiveness to you because it's given to you each and every time. Return to the Holy Supper as we're privileged to partake of today. For there too is forgiveness, the strengthening of your faith, life and salvation to each and every one of you. It comes in his very body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine. And he will bring us to completion in his day. John is sent into the wilderness then to bring that message of salvation to both Jew and Gentile. For God wants all people to come to a saving knowledge and truth of Jesus Christ, we learn from Scripture. And thus St. Paul asks us then in Romans 10, since there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How are they to believe in him whom, whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. How indeed? How is the Lord's path to the heart of a sinful human being to be made straight and level and clear of all of the obstacles that are out there? The obstacles can only be cleared then through the preaching and the hearing of the word of God, the law to show sinners their sin and the gospel message then to show that God has done for them in Jesus Christ, forgiven them all of their sins. When our Lord Jesus Christ began his ministry among men, he began by saying, as we hear in Matthew, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven was standing right in front of the people when he said that. And indeed, the kingdom of God is at hand. Our Lord Jesus came into this reason for one, into this world for one reason and one reason only. To save us from our sins through his atoning sacrifice on the cross. Our Lord Jesus, he was preceded by John the Baptist who proclaimed his coming both to Jerusalem and to the hearts of men. And who upon seeing Jesus, he actually declared him to be, as we hear in John 1, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The promised Messiah had arrived. He was there and John was preparing his way. But we also learn from scripture though that <clears throat> Jesus' path as a man, was not one that was cleared of all the obstacles, nor was it leveled out or straightened, nor were all the hills and valleys brought up, raised down and brought up. Instead, his path, it was filled with many dis different obstacles as he went out there and, and did his ministry. Obstacles such as the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes, the religious leaders, who at every opportunity they had tried to humiliate Jesus tried to find something wrong with him and they always were working at refuting his teachings but their efforts failed that obedient son of God Jesus he never ever wavered from his plan of fulfilling the father's salvation plan he never deviated from it he never wavered with it in winning our salvation then on the cross having victory over sin, death, and the devil. And that came at a very high cost. The cost was his life. His blood shed on that cross. But he did not die on the cross then and leave us without hope. No, he was resurrected from the dead on that third day. And then ascended into heaven, thereby enabling the the sending of the Holy Spirit then to carry on the work of building Christ's church and proclaiming the gospel of forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus Christ himself. 
in this Advent season as we continue on, in this time with its waiting and the coming of the Lord, please don't be distracted by the world. Don't be wooed by its tempting call. There's a lot of things out in the world that are calling to you to forsake the Lord and to follow the worldly things. Don't be tempted and wooed by that. It's going to always be there trying to pull you away from Jesus Christ. Stay with him. Be and heed Paul's exhortation as he says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed then by the renewal of your mind. In other words, live in repentance and the forgiveness of your sins. It's that time of the year when we contemplate our lives and we look at our lives and where our lives are at. How can we smooth out the road? How can we take the hills down and bring the valleys up in our lives? How can we make ourselves ready for the Lord's birth again and ready for ourselves to meet him when he comes again? Be transformed. And then engage with God's word that you may discern what is the will of God, his good and gracious and perfect and acceptable will. And then do it. Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Let this be our own Advent preparation this Advent season for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God grant us ears to hear and the faith to do as we wait and as we prepare to celebrate again the birth of our Savior Jesus. Amen. We stand for prayer. With longing for the coming of Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all people according to their needs. We pray for the church that you, O Lord, would raise up faithful leaders to guide your people in the way of hope and patience and gentleness. God of hope, hear our prayers. We pray for the world that the hearts of leaders of nations would be turned to you, and that all leaders would work for peace among all peoples. God of hope, we pray for the sick and recovering, that you would speak tenderly to them and comfort them with your healing care. Especially remember today John Fear's daughter-in-law, um, who has heart issues going on, that you would continue to be with her and bless the doctors that tend to her. We pray also for Tom and Pam Burney, Tom who continues with health issues, and Pam who is recovering from a broken leg. Surround these your servants with your presence and peace and give them grace and grant them healing and patience in the face of their afflictions and in accordance with your good and gracious will. God of hope, Hear our prayer. We pray for our congregation that this season of Advent would remind us that your word stands forever. God of hope, hear our prayer. We thank you for all the saints whose hope is an example for us. God of hope, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we also come before your throne today and remember the family of Willis Schlody who died this past week and that you be with them, those who mourn and grieve his loss, and that you would give them the peace and grace of your presence, and that they would find comfort in the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of the body and life everlasting, and remind them of the comfort and hope of the resurrection from the dead and that gift of life everlasting through Jesus Christ and the blessed reunion in heaven for all who die in faith. God of hope, hear the prayers we offer. In the name of Jesus Christ, whose coming is certain and whose day is drawing near. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the Messiah, the very Lamb of God, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Prepare us joyfully to remember our Redeemer and receive him who comes to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in Jesus' name, and as he has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which was shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Please be seated.
We stand for a post-communion prayer. O oh God of love, in this meal you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come, when all the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us into the world to tell everyone what you have done and to proclaim the greatness of your name. We pray in the name of the one who is coming again, and whose day draw near, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our closing hymn.
Again, good morning to all of you. It's great to have you here. Forgive me for my voice. I woke up with a hoarse voice this morning. I don't know why. It must just be my time of the year. I feel fine, though. I don't have a cold or anything, just a hoarse voice. As you go about your preparations, again, for celebrating the birth of Jesus, remember that these first couple of weeks, we're actually looking at our heart and preparing our heart and remembering the th places in our lives that need to be changed for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Next week, we go into the third week, which is the pink candle, which is the celebration or joy candle, and our mood changes as we get closer and closer then to Jesus' birth. And so then we start getting more excited and anticipating that birth itself. So have a great rest of the week with the Lord. Again, if any of you are helping with our plan to help next Saturday, um, please go online and sign up on the Sign Up Genius if you can. Um, don't forget to come by my office after service and I'll get you a yellow piece of paper to put in the dash of your car. So the uh, people directing, and you come in on Bluff Road there, um, no, Grove Road, um, just right straight, it runs right into the, the armory and you turn and go into the south parking lot of the armory and that's where the volunteers will park. We'll see you in the back. <clears throat>